peace infinite waters diving deep once again we are here in the art gallery Woo! breathing in that good ass prana i got a question that came in can i talk about the mandela effect what is the mandela effect well a lot of people are experiencing remembering certain events they could have sworn took place and then they find out they actually didn't. And we ain't even had breakfast yet. Can I get a hello there? So Fiona Broom, a paranormal consultant, came up with this theory in 2010. And I got a question. I get loads of questions. Can you do a video about the Mandela effect? What do you think about it? And... I'm going to share with you what I think about it, okay? Now, let me give you some examples of the Mandela effect, okay? A popular one is the Berenstein, Berenstein, Bears, Berenstein? No, it's not. Apparently, it's Berenstein. Huh? How did that get changed so quickly? Nobody knows. Hello, Clarice. I always thought it was Hello Clarice, right? Silence of the Lambs. I come to find out it is Good Evening Clarice. Huh? Who changed that? But the biggest one, and this one even got me because I always thought it was Sex in the City. Did you think it was Sex in the City as well? Come to find out it was Sex and the City. Now here's where it gets really trippy because there is proof from people in award shows saying actually sex in the city. Now, the Mandela effect is because a lot of people actually thought Nelson Mandela passed away back in the 90s. OK, and in actuality, there was a book published which actually said Nelson Mandela passed away in 1991. OK, and this is published. And a lot of people are like, gosh. I thought he had already passed away. Same as Muhammad Ali. Now, a lot of people are reporting these incidents. These memories are coming back to them, right? And another one is life is like a box of chocolates. Do you remember Forrest Gump? Like how many times have you said that? Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. No, you did it totally wrong. It's life was like a box of chocolates. Now, it's very strange when you think mirror, mirror on the wall. No, like where the hell did you get that idea from? It's not even that. It's like magic mirror on the wall, right? <laughs> so it's not even Luke, I am your father. It's no, I am your father. Okay, so the Mandela effect is huge and it's kind of trippy. And for me, I find this fascinating, amazing. Now, I'm going to share with you some insight to why this may actually be happening, because we can talk about parallel universes and other dimensions. Now, what's helped me along my journey is to realize that anything we see is not actually what is. The ancient Hindus talked of the Maya the whole world being an illusion, kind of like a computer simulation. <gasps> Don't worry about it. So when I was thinking about the Mandela effect, I'm like, it could actually be possible because we are living in a kind of computer simulation. You got to check out books like the holographic universe. Goodness gracious. I hope that name hasn't changed already. It's probably like the holographic just the holographic by now, right? Go back and check. It's probably changed. <laughs> People say, Ralph, what happened to you, man? <laughs> Woman? <laughs> Go back to my old videos. Like, I don't even look the same. I am a whole different person. I'm a clone. <gasps> don't tell anybody about it. Now, here's where it gets really exciting because I sometimes realize, yes, we could be living in a computer simulation. You see, Computers are built on binary zeros and ones. And that's what the whole film, The Matrix, was about. That you are like in a computer simulation, right? 
computer generated dream world. So what is real? And reality can always be changed. So you've got people like the Gnostics talking about a group of beings called the Archons living in the fourth dimension who are actually controlling the third dimension. So it made me think that there are like levels to this shit, right? And there are even beings we can't even perceive who are out of our range of frequency, out of our range of frequency that could actually manipulate this reality. Okay, so it got me thinking that, let's just say you're typing a beautiful love letter as you do on the computer. Why don't people write anymore? Don't worry about it. Okay, let's just say you typed that letter like 10 years ago. You could actually go back to the letter right now, if you typed it 10 years ago, and change it if it's still there, right? And then edit it because you missed out a word, like the three words, I love you. You forgot about that, right? And change it and then resend it to that person so they don't slap you across the face again, right? And say, I don't worry about it. I actually put, I love you. You're seeing things differently. So if this is like a computer simulation, you could actually go back into time and change certain variables, okay? And it's amazing because Philip K. Dick, really people say he actually wrote The Matrix or The Matrix was inspired by him, talked about how reality is like an illusion because, and you only notice this, right? It's like the glitch in the matrix when certain variables get changed. He said, you got to look out for the variables. And some of his books were like crazy. Okay. He's like super huge on science fiction, which is actually science now. So how I use this, because I'm always about practicality, like it makes me question everything even more to say, actually, all of these people who are having these memories of certain events that they are now finding out probably didn't even take place, or maybe they did. And we slipped into another reality. So the whole nature of reality is up for questioning. Like, am I even real? Are you even real? People always say, Ralph, I say, what? There are 7 billion people on the planet. And I said, even in early videos, like, how do you even know there are 7 billion people on the planet? What if I told you there were 12 billion people on the planet or 3 billion people? You'll be like, no, Ralph, there are 7 billion people on the planet because somebody has told you. Mm. Slow motion in the art gallery. Mm. I don't know if there are 7 billion people on the planet. It's not exactly like I've, like I've counted each one, one, two, three, uh, like you probably can't even count like 50,000 people, let alone 7 billion. So reality is handed down to us. So that's why you got to question everything. And the Mandela effect for me is just exciting because it goes to show how we don't even know what really happened. We don't even know what happened last summer, let alone last like 10 years ago. And also that you've got to look out for the glitches, right? Because sex in the city, that's what I was, I was always saying sex in the city. Come to find out it was sex and the city, but there is proof it was sex in the city. So it's almost like a little game. These glitches in the matrix, like you just got to laugh at them and realize like, hey, I want to know have you noticed the Mandela effect? Because we got a lot of people diving deep. We got over like, we got millions of people diving deep all around the world. Like, are those people just crazy or have you experienced it? Okay. Sometimes I experience the Mandela effect. I'm like, wait a minute. I could have sworn it was like, whoa, it's just changed a minute ago. And we ain't even had breakfast yet. Feels so good to be alive, baby. Can I get a hello? <laughs> Have a beautiful day. We're here. Infinite waters diving deep. Once again, stay well, stay healthy, question everything.
Tschüss.